Hello, my name is Gary Schotten, and uh, I'm very pleased to be with you today. Uh, today we're going to talk about a subject of who's your customer and how do you take care of your customer, but specifically how you take care of what we call an internal customer. Now I'll explain myself, but uh, let's first talk about our what we'd normally say customer. If you're making a, a, a pizza and your customer comes to the window, you would want your uh, person taking the order to be pleasant, or if they're on the phone, you would judge them and train them to be pleasant and speak nicely and, you know, uh, be a cordial and polite to the customer. And then if uh, the delivery person happens to come and deliver the pizza or, or you're in touch with anybody connected with that company, everyone there represents that company because when you interact with the customer, that's when the judgments are being made. I mean, you could have the best brochures, you could have pretty business cards, you could have uh, even have great price. I was listening uh, many times over where uh, the sales presentation was perfect and everybody was doing good, but somebody had a bad experience. And that bad experience with the customer, with you as your, your uh, supplier of a product or service, that bad experience sticks in their mind. You have to do things that overcome that. So one of the ways we found to permeate this as a leader or owner of your company is to instill that at every step of the way you're dealing with a customer. Now the final supply of your goods or services your, to your customers, what we normally think of the customer, but let's say in my case, I have a buyer that buys steel and his, he's working to buy the steel, to receive it and get it ordered correctly. And internally, the next person that deals with what my buyer of the metal deals is the person that unloads it off the truck and receives it in, checks it off, makes sure it's right. Well, the buyer, he wants to make it just as easy as possible for the person on the truck to do the paperwork, the paperwork's in order. In other words, not make anything difficult. Think, how can I make it good for my, my internal fellow worker to be uh, trouble free? Things go smoothly. Don't have to ask questions. Not vague or uncertain. And so that person is only starts the process. Now, in our case, that person might get a long bar of tubing or something. So he passes that steel, that metal, that piece on to the person at our saws. This might have come in at a tubing, and we might have sawed that in, you know, wall slivers that thick. Well, he's going to make it just as easy as possible for the saw operator. He's not making it difficult. He's not even just making it easy. He's making it exceptionally easy for that uh, person that's, that's the next step in line. That's the internal customer. Maybe where he marks or writes the uh, identification on the long tube. That needs to be clear. It needs to be in the same place all the time. Where he puts his paperwork so that next person in that chain of events doesn't have to find the paperwork. The paperwork's always in order. Everything's on track so that the next person in order can do his good job. But who's next in order? When we cut a piece like that, the saw person, there's some little rough spots. There's some little burrs. You could grab this and you could cut yourself real easy. We had a saw operator years ago. He didn't think, he, he wouldn't listen to us. I said, listen, you've got to make it easy for the person that's picking up that piece of steel because he takes that and just with unknowingly, he could cut himself. Well, this saw person had the attitudes, well, he should wear gloves. No, you should make sure there's no sharp spots on it. Oh, he's got plenty of times. He can just be careful. No. Well, guess what? That saw operator is not working for us anymore, partly because he wouldn't deal properly as an internal customer. He should send that raw material to that next operator, grinding it off smooth, smooth. Doesn't have to go overboard, but he's thinking what's easiest. He's counted them out in an easy way to count because we keep track of every single part. So if there's a hundred parts, he just 
throws them in there and just makes it in a big pile. He lays them out, 10 across, 10 this way, 10 times 10, that's 100. It's easy to count. There's no problem with counting because there's no chance of mistake. We made it easy for the next person. And though on and on and on through the shop, who's handling this material next wants to be your internal customer. And those people in the chain of command, the chain of events, if they think, how would I like to receive it myself? This sounds very elementary, but it's very, very important because every time you have a mistake, you are dealing with something you shouldn't deal with. The paperwork wasn't right. Somebody cuts their finger. I'm going to be proud to tell you you've been almost 700 days going on almost two full years without a lost time accident. Wow, that speaks miles and good to our, to our customers, to our workers. We, we do things to be safe. But you can do that if things are in order. The internal customer, there's things that are lined out smooth. It's, it's always thinking of the other person. Now, if you're the owner, this happened just a couple days ago, we identified someone that did an exceptional job. It's included customer service and some other things. And we saw in his paperwork how well he'd done. It was just kind of what was normally being paid for to do, but he made a good job and he's regularly doing that. I keep in my drawer some extra uh, gift cards. They're $20 gift cards to buy gasoline. And I opened up my drawer and I said, give it to Eric, would you? You know, I got an email from Eric and he was so proud, so happy that we acknowledged him that he had done internal customer. He is taking care of business. He's taking care of the next person in line. He personally may never actually ever see our customer because he doesn't deliver. Oh, he might see him walk by, but he's going to just see one person in, that, in, in our customer. But he has our customer in mind. That's what you've got to permeate through your shop. If you're in Africa and you're making jewelry or making something, that everyone in that uh, shop making, making jewelry has got to be thinking, okay, I'm working internally and eventually for the final customer. Everything's got to be perfect, right, the first time with few exceptions. I'm taking care of my customer, both internal and external. If you're in, 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 uh, in a, a, any foreign country, on any product or any service, there's hardly anything made this day that just one person that takes the order, does everything. It's like a one-man job. That's not reality. There's some people, even though I know it's not a whole lot of people, there's somebody. Maybe it's your wife. You know what? I'm married 43 years. When she cooks a meal, she's not my customer, but she's internal and dear to me. I get up, I put up the dishes, I, I clean off the table. She appreciates that, and I know she does. I'm not patting myself on the back, I'm just saying there's an example. I want harmony with my spouse. I'm doing things I don't have to do. I'm honoring and respecting her. I hope this is helpful to you. We always ask that you consider forwarding this, sharing it through social media, and giving us feedback if you would. Thank you very much.